it's your favorite auntie mo and we are back now i am reviewing a new show beyond the pole this comes on we tv this is the first series of this show the first season of the show now i'm not gonna lie at first i was not gonna review it just because i didn't know exactly how it would be received i know a lot of people look down on strippers and they look down on the stripper life or whatever i say don't knock what nobody does unless you're down and out and you got to do it your damn self half of you mofos out here would be strippers your damn self if you didn't have bad knees and you wasn't raised with morals but this show was really good um i think i'm just gonna review this first episode and the second episode just so i can kind of see what kind of feedback see if i'm getting any views any comments or whatever from it so if i do see a positive um you know feedback on this then i will continue on with the rest of the season but for now we are on season one episode one throw some mo throw some mo um before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the notification button so you know whenever i upload new content um small disclaimer right now you're gonna hear me say ass a lot in this review because about 90% of the show was straight ass. Ass and titties, ass, ass and titties. If you are watching this at work, turn it down because you may hear me say ass a few times, okay? Um, hopefully y'all are ready for this review. I'm ready to give it to you, y'all. So let's go and get right on up into it. Okay, y'all. So we are introduced to the ladies of Behind the Pole. I had to write down their names because, of course, you know, your auntie memory getting bad. I can't remember all this shit. First one, we have Angel Cake, Lily, Labrie, Ling Ling, Lena, Miss Dime, and Stormy Wellington. Okay. Now, when the episode starts off, boom, right off the gate. You got ass over here, ass over there, ass everywhere, ass everywhere. I mean, it was ass, Henny, Patron, Tito's, and Benji's all over the doggone place. I mean, for the first 30 seconds, it was just like you was up in Magic City or something, some damn where. It was ass all over the doggone camera or whatever, right? So it cuts to backstage or whatever in the locker room where the girls are or whatever and it's um who's back there it's lily angel cake and sexy red so they all just back there having girl talk or whatever right everybody's talking about how they feed her because they sitting up there toting around all that ass baby and for another thing every single one of these dances on here asses were ridiculous okay ridiculous i don't know if it was natural it was naturally theirs because they paid for them and don't nobody knock what they hustle is. But baby, it was more ass than the rest of their body. I mean, like, dang, don't run because you're going to tip over with all that ass. And so, girl, like I said, everybody was just back there talking about how much they feed her because they can't run all this ass. Yes, that's what's going to happen when you get all that fix flat and, and, and all up there in that ass. That's what's going to happen. Y'all, so we are first introduced to Labrie. Labrie says that she's been a dancer at Magic City. Y'all going to see me looking down at my nose a lot, too. Just let y'all know that. It was a lot that went on in this episode, so I had to make sure that I took some good notes. Anywho, we have Labrie. She says she's been working at Magic City for about four to five years or whatever, right? Labrie normally works at Magic City, but tonight she went and, you know, worked at another club. I forgot what she said it was called. I don't know why I'm thinking Jingles. <laughs> if the name of that club was Jingles, then she wouldn't work at Jingles that night. I don't know why, but I'm thinking the damn name of that club is Jingles. That, that goddamn name of the club was not fucking Jingles. I don't know what it was. Anyway, she wouldn't work at Jingles tonight or whatever, right? And so, she's in there dancing, minding her business or whatever, right? Soon as they cut to the door, get to walk up in jingles, y'all. Young Jack. Jack. Jack and all his boys come walking up in the strip club. You know the first thing I thought, where the hell is Kendra Esquire and Associates, um, law firm and attorneys? Jack, I don't think she would be happy with you up in here in this doggone strip club with ass over here and ass over there and ass everywhere all up in your doggone face. So, girl, he goes in. He sits down at this table, right? Now, the table, if you all have ever been in clubs before, like, they'll have some chairs. They have, like, little mini stages or whatever, right? So, it's this girl that's on a mini stage. She's another stripper. Her name is Summer. She's dancing for Jock and all his boys. Well, Labrie comes over because Labrie said that Jock invited her to come to the club. Again, 
Where is Kendra Esquire and Associates Attorney at Law? Just saying. So Bree goes over to where Jock and all his boys in, and Bree starts, you know, making that making an ass do whatever it do, whatever. Summer sees what's going on. Summer like, oh no, hell no. Oh. She comes and jumps up off the pole, girl. She goes over there to where Jock and the Bree is, and like, well, what's what's this exchange? What's going on right here? What is all of this? And so he like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm chilling. I'm yeah, I'm doing me. I'm chilling. What's going on? She like, well, um, you supposed to be throwing money at me. Why is you throwing money at her? LaBree starts getting just as territorial. She starts stepping in between in the middle of Summer and Jock and starts going like this again with her butt cheeks and all of that. So Summer like, wait a minute, Jock, uh, what the hell is you doing? And da 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 da. Her and Jock kind of start going back and forth that or whatever, right? Baby. Jock told his girl, I think you need to put your eyes on your lip and watch your motherfucking mouth. Oh! I passed all the way the hell out. For a dick to tell you to put your eyes on your lip and watch your mouth? Girl! Somebody mama told him that before. Because that sounds like some crap I say to my son. Boy, you better put your eyes on your lip and watch your goddamn mouth. Believe me, I will tell my son that. So y'all, Summer gets pissed and goes backstage or whatever, right? She trying to call Jock to tell Jock to come out there with her so she can like holler at him or whatever, right? Jock like, man, I'm not fist to go and do... I'm sitting here trying to wash this ass. I'm not going no dog on where. So y'all, they cut to a day before Summer getting into a fist fight with another doggone stripper. Y'all, I don't know what happened. I don't know who was in that room, but it was just them two fighting and a cameraman. Wasn't no security, wasn't no house mother, wasn't no manager, wasn't nobody else around. Y'all, this is the first fist fight I seen on reality TV where didn't nobody break it up. I was waiting on somebody to come break it up. I was like, y'all just gonna let these hoes fight like this? I mean, lace fronts, tick on bitties, butt cheeks all over the place. I mean, they were straight knocking furniture over up out of there, y'all. It was crazy. And then on another side note, while Summer was being all, you know, shady or whatever with Brie, with LaBrie, Summer whole lace front, you know, regular lace front when it's like fried out, like it's like this. Girl, her lace front was doing like this. It was like, hey, it was like all up. But she steady talking crap. Like, this bitch don't know me. Y'all got me messed up. I tell you what, I tell you what. No, you won't. Not with your lace front saying hi to everybody. Next, y'all, we meet Angel Cake. Now, I thought Angel Cake was super, super pretty. She kind of looked like a knockoff Kardashian. But still, I thought she was very, very beautiful. She says she's been a dancer for about eight years. She has a nine-year-old son. Um... And she also has a 21-year-old niece that lives with her as well. Niece who is a stripper as well. Um, she was saying that, you know, her baby daddy is not involved in her life, um, not involved in the son's life. Her son suffers from a learning disability, and so he's in special education classes. Um, Angel Cake herself says she was in special education classes when she went to school as well. Um... Another thing that I think was really, really dope that she says she does with her son, she practices yoga with him to help keep, help keep him grounded and centered. And I just, I don't know. I, to me, I thought that was dope. And her and I kind of share a little connection, whatever, because my son as well, he deals with autism. And I don't say suffer because he ain't suffering from nothing. When I tell you my son is the bomb, okay. But I thought that that was, you know, I thought that was dope. She does yoga with him. And it was good to see... Aside of them not being in the club, bent over and all that, she was in actual mommy mode. Like I said, she was beautiful. Her son was beautiful. That is the induction to um, Angel Cakes, okay? Next, we are introduced to Leah. I thought Leah was gorgeous as well, too. Leah was one of them pro-black sisters. I mean, super sexual chocolate, beautiful chocolate skin, had a fro bigger than a Jackson 5. She's real pro-black, you know, likes to wear her dashikis and all of that. So we're introduced to her. She has a beautiful baby girl as well. She was at home on her mommy mode or whatever, cooking for her babies and all of that. I thought that was really dope. Next, you know. we are introduced to Lena. Lena said she has been dancing for nine years. She says that um, her mother was not in her life. Her mother was addicted to crack cocaine. So her mother was never really in her life. Her father passed away when she was two years old. So she said that she didn't have any woman in her life teaching her how to be a woman, that she learned how to be a woman from men. 
that's got to be hard as hell. So um, they cut to a scene where she's in the club. She's on the phone with her mom. And basically, she's checking up on her mom, seeing how her mom is doing because her mom to this day is still battling her drug addiction. And so she was just checking on her mom, making sure her mom was okay. And um, her mom was on the phone crying and apologizing, basically saying how, you know, she... She apologizes for not being there for her. She wished that they had a better, um, um, a better mother-daughter relationship. How she wants to get better. She wants to get off the streets, and how she wants them to rebuild up their relationship. And I thought it was dope. Lena ends up going over to Lily's house again. Lily's the pro-black chick with the beautiful ass fro. She ends up going over to her house, and you know they was just checking in with each other, seeing how each other was doing. And Lena was saying that she wants to go to counseling to sort of deal with her her mommy issues, whatever that she has. Another thing that Lena says that she does is that she drinks to, you know, bury her feelings and, and all this that she has going on emotionally and mentally. And she does admit when she gets to drinking that she can be a savage. Like she said, she don't start no fights, but but she ready to end a fight in a heartbeat. Girl, if that's you are, if that's what you already know about yourself, y'all don't need to go ahead and get yeah, hell on that child so labria's at the spa labria's getting her butt massages and all that done and she's getting the cellulite removed from the back of her legs now while she's there stormy wellington comes in stormy wellington is off top bomb ass businesswoman she's an independent chick she said that she used to be a stripper when she was 13 that's when she first started stripping she said growing up her mother called her a bitch her nickname by her mother was her bitch, her little bitch. And she said that her mother called her bitch because she was like, the world is gonna treat you like one. People gonna call you that. So I'm just trying to toughen you up and give you some tough skin. I thought, damn. But Stormy comes in, Stormy is in there getting some kind of something done on her stomach to make her stomach flat. Cause you know, people don't work out nowadays no more. That's my problem. I work out two days a week and it's a lot. It's a lot. I used to work out all the time. I wish I had some of their money to where I could just go to the spa, spend a couple of hours there, and come out snatched up. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on that. So Stormy and Labrie are talking, and Labrie is telling Stormy that she has a cosmetic line. Now, Labrie is a big fan of Stormy. She says she follows her on Instagram and social media and all this other stuff because, like I said, Stormy is... She's that bitch. She's out there getting it or whatever, right? And so Stormy is kind of like a mentor to the other girls that are in the club. She wants to help these girls come out with an exit plan to get out of the strip club. That's what her, like, like her role is or whatever, right? And so she's telling Labrie, if you have a cosmetic line, why are you still on the pole? The energy that you put into your cosmetic line is what you're going to get out of it. So obviously, you're not putting enough time and energy into your cosmetic line. That's probably why it's not going anywhere. And so Labrie asked Stormy if she'll kind of step in and be kind of like a big sister mentor to her, even though Stormy is not in the cosmetic line. She thinks that maybe you can help me sort of guide me in the right direction so I can get my business off popping to where it wants to be. And I thought that was cute because you don't see a lot of black women trying to help other black women. You see us trying to put each other down. If one woman can help another woman, chick, you do that. And I commend that. That's some real bitch stuff right there. Y'all, so the girls all meet up. They at some dude house. I don't know. Labrie says some dude let her bar his house to have drinks with the girls. I don't know, child. That's probably damn Airbnb. But they over at somebody's house have some drinks or whatever, right? Girl, guess who there? Tia Becca, girl. Scrap daddy on, baby mama. She there. Ling Ling is there with Leah, Lena, Lana, all these other girls with the L's in their name. They all there, whatever, right? And so they just all sitting back talking, Kiki, and basically talking about how you need to have an exit, exit strategy from the strip club. Like, you can't be stripping for when you 45, 56 something years old. Don't nobody want to see that old cougar up there like that. But Tia was saying that she has a company that trains girls on how to be cocktail waitresses and bottle girls. Now, if y'all follow Tia on social media, you see she's one of them popping bottle girls. Tia said that on a slow night, she gets a thousand dollars. That's on a slow night for her. Like, really? Ling Ling, you're gonna, we're gonna introduce you to her in a minute. She was saying that on average, like a slow night for her, she done got $60 before. $60 for all this ass clapping and bent over and sweating and all that for $60? No, ma'am. 
no man. So Tia knows this guy that is a photographer or whatever, right? Because Ling Ling's main ultimate goal, she's a beautiful girl. She's mixed with Asian and black, of course, where she gets her stage name Ling Ling or whatever from. She wants to be um, a model. She wants to be like a high fashion runway model or whatever, right? And so Tia, um, Tia Becca, that's what she goes by. She ain't Tiara, or she only Tiara on Love and Hip Hop. On Beyond the Pole, she's Tia Becca. So, Tia Becca is telling her that she knows a photographer. He's having an industry party that night. So, they want, so Tia wants to invite everybody out to the industry party so they can introduce themselves to him. Hopefully, Ling Ling can make a connection with this photographer so she can possibly get her little career or whatever popping off. Hopefully so, girl. So, they get to the party, whatever, right? It's 5,100 bitches all around the place. So, Ling Ling can't even get to the photographer. But then again, Ling Ling is kind of... She's shy. She's real shy. You can tell. She's not like, to me, she, she's not like your average stripper. She's not loud. She's not wild. She's not out there. She seems really quiet, really reserved. And she says that that's why, you know, stripping wasn't her first choice. She says she actually was a bottle girl for a while, but that didn't work out for her. So she had to actually go back to the pole. So hopefully this worked out with this little photographer or whatever, girl. You ain't got to be up here in the club for the rest of your life doing all of this. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, so the next day, Ling Ling goes and meets up with Tia Beck or whatever, right? Because Tia is, how, like I said, she's doing this class teaching girls how to be bottle girls and how to be um, cocktail waitresses. Tia's thing is, I want to teach these girls how to not just walk away with $20, $30 worth of tips at night. She's trying to teach them how to flip these tables, basically how to get your money, how to hustle these rappers and all of these celebrities when they come into the strip club, how to hustle their ass out that money. And she's obviously made a successful life for doing that. So Tia, I'm going to need you to um get you an app together, girl. Get your app somebody can download if they want to be a bottle girl. You can make some money off that, girl. So her and Ling Ling talk or whatever. She asked Ling Ling what happened the night at the party. You were supposed to meet up with the photographer. You were supposed to try to get to know him, like what happened. And again, Ling Ling was saying that she's just very shy. She didn't know how to approach him. It was just too many men around, too many women around. She was too scared. She didn't know what to do, right? And so Tia was telling her like, look, that's the thing you gonna have to do. You a dancer. You gonna have to learn how to finesse your way to get in, get these conversations, get these meetings that you want, all of that. like. Ultimately, what is your end goal? Because if you're going to be too afraid to approach people with your dream, then what are you going to do? Now, like I told you before, Ling Ling said that she used to be a bottle girl. She was only doing, um, being a bottle girl and a, a waitress because she had like this other business that she was trying to start or whatever, right? She said her business failed and she had to go back to the pole. The reason why her business failed is because somebody's husband was paying for her um, her business. Somebody's husband was her investor, right? So she said after the wife found out that he was investing in her, the wife was like, look, if you take out this money to get in this hoe, I'm gonna leave your ass. So the husband told her, hey, Ling Ling, look, it ain't gonna work out. I ain't trying to leave my wife for you and your business. So Lily had to go get back on that pole. So Lily trying to start again from the bottom, trying to make her way up. Because she said after he pulled out, she lost a condo, she lost a car, she lost a luxurious house, she lost a luxurious clothes and all of this. So I'm guessing that probably was a sugar daddy that was paying for everything for her. Girl, I ain't mad at you. Hey. Y'all, so lastly, LaBrie is on the phone with Stormy Wellington. LaBrie is saying how, um, no, Stormy was saying how she's putting a, together a mixer at her house. And LaBrie wants to invite all the girls over there so that they can all basically get some words of wisdom from the infamous Stormy What's her name from the infamous Stormy Wellington? Y'all, the episode ended from there. This first episode was pretty good. Um, like I said, I'm gonna watch the, ep the second episode. I'm gonna do a review on that. Put it out for you guys. See if y'all like it. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this review right here. If I don't get a lot of views on it, then I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm not gonna do the next couple of episodes on it because I already got a lot on my plate with the shows that I'm reviewing now, plus the, show, the shows that are coming up. But anyways, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this review. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.